physical body and subtle body and then linka sharira which is transmigrating body in the 39th karika we have seen the differences of subtle body and physical body gross body <coughs> the subtle subtle body will remain it remains uh, until the jiva get liberated so therefore sometimes it is called as niyata is the nitya niyata and all those this will be always there and gross body is perishable as we see when the karma of a particular body finishes off the body perishes so that is the nasham the sista form of that body itself so also according to uh, sankhya even the destruction of the body is also a manifestation so we have seen that satkarya vata so nothing is dismissed or uh, we can say that no object in its uh, nature is perishable or absent in that sense there is no absence in sankhya or in vedanta that is called sat satkaryavata so therefore this uh, destruction of body is also a type of manifestation in the manifestation in the sense a different type of manifestation now it is not appearing in the same form it disappears so without uh, a manifestation disappearing cannot happen that is what they say now after this we have 40 karika karika number 14 40 the karika is uh, we are discussing of the linka sharira linka sharira linka sharira is uh, transmigrating body so here we can see some difference between subtle body and this as we see the karika purvotpanna masaktam niyadam mahadadi sukshma paryantam purvotpanna masaktam niyadam mahadadi sukshma paryantam 
संसरदि निरुभोगम भावैरधिवासित लिंग and this karika and the continuing karika is uh, important in regard to with this linga sharira the concept of linga sharira the purvotpannam asaktam niyadam mahadadi sukshma paryantam purvotpanna means this body this linga sharira is produced at the beginning of creation purvotpannam is the first body created why we will see the reason because this linga sharira is trayodasha karana roopam lingam this linga sharira is made of 13 instruments therefore it is made before so 13 means mahatatva ahankara and then all the eleven indriyas so it is made of 13 indriyas all the instrumental karana So it is certain. Uh, it is uh, yeah. In Gorda Bad Bhashya, it is called that Trayodasha Karana Rupam Lingam. So that is Purvot Pannam, permitive. It is produced and asaktam, and not attached to any any body. Asaktam, unconnected. or it means it takes all the bodies and leave the body and go it is not uh, uh, attached to any body so an asaktam so we will see the reason why it is said so because this linga sharira takes the birth all the different birth different types of physical body and uh, sukshma sharira the next karika we will see that it will take many births therefore it is called asaktam it is not attached to any body and niyatam relatively continuant it is not ultimately continuant but relatively continuant until the uh, emancipation or the kaivalya it continues as a body with the reflected consciousness what we call as mahattatva so mahattva is important in this uh, combination of 13 so mahattatva is the controller that we have seen the importance of intellect in last uh, three karikas so therefore it is relatively continuant mahadadi sukshma paryantam uh, it uh, it is it starts from mahadadi beginning from the com- combination of mahattatva and it goes up to the subtle body or tanmatras So it is in between the beginning the combination of tattvas beginning with the mahat and ending with the subtle body tanmatras so it it, it it is in between therefore mahadadi sukshma paryantam samsaradi nirubhogam bhavai radivasitam lingam so it is in the samsar samsara samsara means moving moves the body to body takes many births 
but it is untouched with all those. So samsaradi, samsaradi means transmigrates. It takes many birth. We know what is samsara is, birth and death. So samsaradi, but nirupa bhogam. This linga sharira will not enjoy any of the enjoyments. Nirupa bhogam. So this, all these points are very important to identify what is linga sharira is. Now, without a gross body and without a, a subtle body, either gross body or subtle body, this linga sharira will not have any enjoyment. Therefore, particularly, in linga sharira is not having any enjoyment, niruva bhoga. So karma is carried by uh, this uh, linga sharira, but karma is not experienced by it. The experiments, experiences will happen only in connection with gross body and subtle body. That is what it is called niruva bhoga. Niruva bhoga, free from all experiences. And then bhavai radhivasidam linkam. Bhavas, we have already seen bhavas, the virtue and all those, dharmati. Dharmati, eight forms are called bhava, which we have seen in the intellectual creation. In the last karikas, there were intellectual creation first, then elemental creation. So these bhavas are intellectual creation, starting from intellect, uh, I, ahankara and uh, mind on all those. So bhavaha deposits such as virtue, vice and all those. You can say whatever we call as emotions and sentiments. These are all bhavas. So they are there. Bhavair adhivasidam linka. Now what is linka? So linka is having these bhavas, the dispositions, carrying all these deposits with it. That is why it is bhavair adhivasidam. So this is the identification of linga sharira. Uh, bhavair adhivasidam uh, linkam. Uh, adhivasidam, the word meaning can be perfumed or tied with that, carrying uh, uh, the, all this adhivasidam, carrying all these emotions. Emotions means this virtue and vice, all those sentiments. It is connected to karma. It means it is carrying all the karmas. This thirteen uh, instrument, uh, starting from uh, intellect, mahatattva, and all others, they are carrying the karma. Therefore, it is called bhagar adivastam linka. The linka can be uh, translated. It is uh, as the word meaning can be mergent, but actually it is a, it is uh, transmigrating form of body, sukshma sharira. Now we, subtle body has two forms, transmigrating form and the other form. So now this, all these th three karikas, you should be very careful with the, the, the definitions we are going to discuss. Because this uh, concept of linka sharira and subtle body is very confusing. And uh, here when we see the wordings also, we are uh, familiar with many of these words and its meaning, but here it is conveyed in this another way. Because even in Vedanta, sometimes uh, Linga Sharira and Sushma Sharira is distinguished and sometimes they talk together. So, so always uh, there is a confusion. 
so which is called linka shariram and which is called sushma shariram here the difference is mentioned what is the difference between three so now we have three so this linka shariram the so what we can understand from these wordings that this linga shariram is having all the deposit of karmas which we call as samskaras no habitual potencies the samskara should be translated as habitual potencies the habits and after the habits what is stored back there for a longer process that is called samskaras and normally it is translated as imprints imprints of habits or imprints of experiences this is what we uh, call as samskaras because there is no uh, special word in english for samskaras so this linga sharira is holding all these habitual potencies or samskaras and from that the vasanas develops the difference between vasanas and samskaras samskaras are habitual potencies which are deposited there for a long time it is un, it is uh, undistinguishable it means avyagrita unmanifested so you will not know what samskaras are there uh, it is like we can call it as unconscious mind is based on unconscious mind then out of those deposition some samskaras are developed in the form of vasanas so these vasanas are connected to the preceding bodies preceding a uh, subtle body or gross body so we can call this vasanas are subliminal imprints which are connected to forthcoming bodies for example if one human body has to come then from the deposit of that habitual imprints there form a vasana bound a group of vasanas which will be uh, manifesting into the form of bodies uh, gross body human body so the vasanas Uh, will get together or work together to form the body in subliminal level and out of that when it forms it has two different manifestations intellectual manifestation what we already talked about after that the human intellect human mind and human sense organs will be formed and then the second manifestation is uh, that uh, gross body like no elemental manifestation the same vasanas produce of the elemental manifestation so this elemental manifestations come through ahankara that uh, in five tanmatras five uh, subtle elements and five gross element and their combinations so the both are formed from the same vasanas the group of vasana which are ready to manifest from out of the samskaras this is the process of manifestation now this linka sharira is holding uh, this habitual uh, imprints that uh, that is samskaras for many many births it has so much of uh, 
no, it is uh, like uh, uh, so much of collection of these samskaras from many births. And according to the uh, preceding uh, body, it forms as vasanas, then desires and all those things. So, uh, here, this uh, transmigrating body, why it is called transmigrating body? First thing we have to remember, when we call body here, shariram, it doesn't mean the body like the gross body, physical body. Shariram means it is a, it is a connect, uh, it is a combination of many things. So, uh, like, you know, many limbs together is called body. We have many parts. Similarly, if something is a collection and that will change its form, then it can be called as body. Uh, like for, for example, we call the mind uh, and the seven, uh, 17 uh, parts of the mind and what, uh, the uh, forms of mind altogether is called subtle body. So it is also called body. Body, in English also, body is a combination. Uh, so body of people, you know, if we say there are many people together, working together, it's called a body of people. Uh, like, uh, similarly here it is said like that. So therefore, uh, like physical, unlike physical body, this gross body, uh, sorry, uh, the subtle body and this Linga Sharira has no physical parts like uh, head uh, and the uh, leg and uh, hands. No, we should not imagine like that. This is the function is called body. The Sharira, the function is called body. And this Linga Sharira will last until you liberate it until the jivatma liberated in one sense in another sense it is said in somewhere in sankhya uh, sutras and bhashyas this linka sharira itself is giving the liberation therefore it cannot perish it cannot die because if the liberation should be maintained according to Sankhya philosophy. Vedanta does not need this point, but uh, Sankhya needs it because there the Purusha and Prakriti is separate and the enjoyment as Bhoga and Abhavarta both are formed from Prakriti only. Therefore, to maintain the liberation forever, the linga sarira will be maintained just in the form of pure intellect. That is mahatattva in the purest form. The discriminative knowledge which we gained by sadhana for the liberation will be maintained there. Since uh, this uh, linka sharira is not giving any enjoyment, it's already said, it is not giving any enjoyment or it is not enjoying, nirubha bhoga. So therefore you don't have any problem or any, any uh, difficulty with linka sharira. Because linka sharira is totally unattached. So it is not disturbing the uh, uh, the person. But only problem is if Linga Sharira is there with this uh, connection, union of Prakriti and Purusha, it will continue to take many births. Samsara. You have to see the, all the characteristics. I am just uh, uh, talking on all these points. So therefore we have to detach Linga Sharira. Why, if that linka sharira is uh, connected with the prakriti and purusha, 
still the prakriti is purusha connected with ignorance superimposition then you will have prakriti because it will take birth and to take the birth it has all the potencies because the imprints of the habits are there a lot a lot of uh, the habits are there so it can take many births therefore to stop that we have to do something for that we do this uh, practice of sadhana to discriminate it and that is uh, one point uh, in regard with uh, the linga sharira now uh, to identify this what is linga sharira and uh, uh, sukshma sharira so without clearly identify if i talk you will not catch the point what i am trying to say therefore we have a appendix number 2 in the back path appendix number 2 there we have given a comparison chart you got it so it is said comparison between subtle body sukshma sharira and transmigrating body linga sharira so now we will know the difference ha ah. to sukshma sharira informed by vishesha distinguishable so last uh, shloka mariga uh, we have seen the avishesha and vishesha distinguishable undistinguishable tanmatranya vishesha so this uh, sukshma sharira is within vishesha it is distinguishable it is also a body and it has all the enjoyments uh in relation to linga sharira formed of 13 karanas instruments 10 indriyas plus 3 andakaranas that we already know it is formed of 13 and for this we have a, a, a godapada bhashya quote trayodash karanam lingam trayodash karanam lingam so this can be remembered so that is the uh, linga sharira now this tanmatras are not there in linga sharira tanmatra the subtle elements are not there in linga sharira it takes the support when it needs to enjoy or to form a new body then linga sharira will connect with five elements tanmatras the first point and the second point is medium of experience body for experiencing karmas so medium of experience that is to say body for experiencing karma means sukshma sharira has experiences same like physical body gross body where we have experience in mind in a dream state the dream state we are what we are experiencing is with sukshma sharira according to uh, the vedantic and the both sarva but this sukshma sharira has uh, different forms Uh, like we can say it has uh, uh, bodies like human and others is called parthiva sharira then it has watery body this varuna varuna sharira jeliya sharira similarly air body so it has vayavya sharira and fire body it has agni sharira also so at least four types of sharira it has so it means uh, other than human beings like uh, the uh, what you say the celestial beings celestial bodies so bhuta preta and gandharva and devatas all those have this body so they are all having different type of experiences so this is mentioned here we will discuss this later 
Uh, because Sankhyas are talking about these Devatas. So therefore, this Sukshma Sharira uh, can experience all the karmas. But the experiences of pain and pleasure, the Linka Shariram, what is called as uh, uh, Linka Shariram, having only in the three Andhakaranas, because the Andhakarana has some experiences. So this experience can be added to Linga Shaira. Why? Because it is having of 13 Karanas. So these experiences will be there. But without body, there is no separate body for this. Always with the Linga Sharira in creation. In creation, when we talk about Linga Sharira, this Sukshma Sharira will be there. Without Sukshma Sharira, Linga Sharira cannot exist. So next Karya, we will see that. So, Chitram Yadha Asrayam Ides Thanva Adibhyo Vina Yadha Chaya. So the next Karya will mention that point. So without Sushma Sharira, uh, uh, Linga Sharira cannot exist. It means where there is Sukshma Sharira, there is Linga Sharira. Similarly, where there is gross body, physical body, there is Linga Sharira. So Linga Sharira can enter into the, all these three, all these two bodies. So always with Linga Sharira in creation. Uh, you see a question mark there, it's not necessary. Uh, there is no question mark. Takes the vehicle as subtle body and gross body in creation. Now you understand how the karmas come. So now the karmas are there in linga sharira only. Because karmas are transmigrating. This sushma sharira is not transmigrating. Sushma sharira has to connect with linga sharira for the transmigration. And uh, when uh, when we talk about uh, these five elements, subtle five elements, tanmatras, According to Sankhya philosophy, it is uh, the point uh, should be noted that they say this Tanmatras, each Tanmatra is all pervading. All pervading means it is everywhere. Each Tanmatra, the sound rudiment and the touch rudiment is all pervading, it has no limit. This is one interesting point, how they developed. So they said, uh, that if the Tanmatras has no gross body, it has no limitation. If the Tanmatras have uh, no uh, subtle body, it has no limitation. Therefore, this Linka Sarira is entering uh, and connecting the Tanmatras and forming the body. Therefore, it is called transmigrating. And now, if the Tanmatras uh, are all pervading, then what about Mahatattva and the, this thing? That we will see where we have made a small chart to understand all this. Because this, now we, what we are going to discuss in all three, four karikas, all this technically very important uh, in relation with uh, this uh, Linka Shariram and Sushma Shariram what they are talking about. Because in Vedanta we don't have so much details about all this. Hmm. So it is, uh, it is uh, the Linga Sharira will take two bodies, two vehicles of subtle body and gross body. And in the fourth point, the Sushma Sharira takes multiple forms like gross body. Sushma Sharira. And Linga Sharira, when there is no body, it is formless. Linga Sharira, when there is no body, it is formless. Why? Because it is in the form of Mahatattva and Mahankara. He has no body. And Sukshma Sharira, it is with bodily qualities. The fifth uh, point, Sukshma Sharira has bodily qualities. Bodily, bodily qualities means it can experience and it will change its forms and decay and take birth and everything will be there. 
all the six uh, uh, manifestations. And the linga sharira identical with instrumental qualities. So we have 13 instruments. It is identical with one with that. Now what is called linga sharira is 13 indriyas. Sixth point, it cannot be discarded by knowledge as gross. The sukshma sharira cannot be discarded by knowledge as gross. What does it mean? When you have knowledge, this body, physical body will remain. After the knowledge, it will not die. Therefore, we have Jeevan Muktas. For the sake of Jeevan Mukta, we have to say that this body remains even after the knowledge. That is accepted. Similarly, the Sukshma Sharira. So this body will remain. The Sukshma Sharira will also remain. And the experience of bondage and liberation. But in Linga Sharira, we have the experience of bondage and liberation. So, when it liberated, the Linga Sharira is separated or uh, you identify the Linga Sharira with the Prakriti and the reflected consciousness are separate. Reflected consciousness are separate from that. Why? Because this happens in buddhi, intellect. And it happens uh, separating the union of prakriti and purusha. Or the misidentification of you, uh, misidentification of prakriti and purusha. It happens in the intellect. Therefore, the experience of bondage and liberation can be there in the linka sharira. Therefore, it is linka sharira. That is why I said it remains. In liberation also, it remains. Now, how it is uh, liberated, that we will uh, take the next point. It has no freedom in action. The seventh point, sukshma sharira, as the physical body, uh, Sushma Harida has no freedom in action. It means it is acting according to the karmas. Like physical body is acting according to the karmas as per the pre-program. The subtle body is also acting with the pre-program. By discrimination, it has freedom in performance and non-performance. Now this is the speciality of Linga Sarira. This is a liberation for Linga Sarira. After discrimination, so once the Viveka happens, this Linga Sarira can freely act, perform and non-performance. It has some freedom. Therefore, after the knowledge, if the jnani, the liberator one, wants to act or live long for some time more and do something, he can do it with the discriminative knowledge. It is possible. So Jivan Mukti is possible. And Jivan Mukti is there in uh, Yoga Sutra. So there is also, we discuss about Jivan Mukti. Because uh, the Jivan Mukti, the knowledge is different compared to Vedanta. We have Brahma Jnana here in Vedanta, but Sankhya Yoga has the discriminative knowledge. But Jivan Mukti is same. Only there is difference in knowledge, the form of knowledge. Here, there it, uh, Yoga and Sankhya has discriminative knowledge, which is called Viveka Khyadi, ultra discriminative knowledge, the final discriminative knowledge. That is the knowledge they have for given mood. Here, the Abharata Jnana, the Brahma Jnana is the knowledge. 
Now the eight points, it is resolved into tanmatras. This sukshma sharira ultimately resolved into tanmatras. This gross body resolved into tanmatra. Similarly, the sukshma sharira was also resolved into tanmatras. This gross body combination first uh, uh, is decays uh, into five elements, gross elements, then gross element gradually uh, dissolves into tanmatras. This is the process. And linka sharira dissolved into prakriti during pralaya. So ultimately, when mahapralaya comes, in the state of Maga, Mahapralaya, until it will remain. That is why I said it, it will remain until. And Mahapralaya, of course, the Mahatattva is uh, resolved into Prakriti. In that time, this Linga Sharira is also resolved. Because when uh, Ahankara resolves into uh, Mahatattva and Mahatattva resolves into Prakriti, then the all body resolves. There is no uh, Linga Sharira on that. It is called Mahapralaya. Mahapralaya, only Prakriti remains according to Sankhya. With the uh, Vedanta also same. Vedanta also in Mahapralaya where they say the Prakriti remains. We can see in uh, Ishavasya, Bhashyam and all those. Abhyakta, Abhyagrita. The state of Abhyagrita and manifested state remains. And uh, here it is also the same. In Mahapralaya, Prakriti uh, remains. And what is called Mahapralaya? Equilibrium of Trigunas. So, when everything resolves, the equilibrium of Gunas remains with the support of Gunas. So, therefore, it is called Mahapralaya. The ninth point, last point, not produced by parents. The Sushma Sharira is not produced by parents. And that is said in the last karika, we have seen the 29th karika. And linka sharidam, the individuals as I. So what is what can be known as linka sharidam is I, I am. So in that the I, which is a uh, central uh, egoism, the I-ness, which is controlling all body-mind combination. So this is called I. So that I can be said as the experience of Linga Sharira because intellect is not directly experienced. Intellect is working for us but uh, the experience is I. Then mind, then uh, all the sense organs then with the outside objects. So these are the uh, comparisons or differences between uh, linka Sharidam and Sushma Sharidam. <coughs> now here you can see how this linka Sharira transmigrates and take new birth. <coughs> that is uh, shown here. It can be said Jiva Gati. So linga sharira gati. The so, transmigration of individual soul. Now what is individual soul? Linga sharira. That is what we are talking about. Now jivatma become linga sharira here. And Vedanta also, uh, there are so many places it is mentioned. Uh, even though we normally say Andhakarana uh, Pradivimbedam Chaitanyam. The consciousness reflected on Andhakarana. But that is Lingam only. So this word Lingam is used in Vedanta in many places. Uh, and this Linga Sharira as the reflection of consciousness. It means Linga Sharira is not unconscious, it is conscious. The transmigration of individual soul. So we see from departure, how it departs, gamanam, then agamanam, we have two. Uh, 
how it returns. So when it goes from here, first goes to fire or smoke according to karmas. Through fire or smoke. Okay? And it is connected to fire okay, because then the body decays. It's separated from body. The prana and the combination is support, separated. And then it is connected to fire or fire in the sense after that the day, night, it goes like Dakshinayana and Uttarayana. If you are going to, uh, you have a karma for uh, heaven, then you will go with the smoke. And if you have karma for uh, a better world, then you will take the part of fire. So this is how describe, uh, uh, when the body is uh, burned after the last uh, ceremony, then it happens. Uh, it is all, uh, you, can, you can say, it's all signs. This is not actually the fire is taking. It is all sign. The light and all those is sign. And they, uh, with the Shukla Baksha and Krishna Baksha, is called Dekshanayana and Uttarayana. Both together we have mentioned. Uh, if you have a better karma, then you will go uh, in the Shukla Baksha. Mm. The bright half of the lunar month is called Shukla Paksha. And if you have a karma for uh, Swarga, heaven, then you will go dark half of the lunar month. Because you go there and experience, then come back. Then from Shukla Paksha and Krishna Paksha, it goes to Uttarayanam and Dakshinayanam. It is mentioned in Upanishads. And in Bhagavad Gita, Agnir Jodhi Raha Shukla Shanmasa Uttarayana Dhumo Ratri Stada Krishna which is there in Bhagavad Gita also. So Uttarayana and Dakshinayana. Progress of the sun to the north of the equator which is called Uttarayana because many uh, do not understand what is Uttarayana means. So Uttarayana means uh, the progress of the sun towards north. And Dakshinayan means progress of the sun towards south. Now uh, Dakshinayanam starts. It's already in Dakshinayanam. It's going towards south. And from there, uh, the, this uh, Linka Sharira, the individual soul, will go to Pitra Lokam, the abode of forefathers, where all will be there. Uh, it will go there. And there they don't have any communication. It is only called Pidriloga. It means when you go there, you cannot think that they may identify you and, and all those. No, nothing. After leaving this body, there is no such identification. No uh, talking, no nothing there. So it is uh, all are going there and they are there as forefathers. It is called Pidriloga. So there, uh, according to the karma, the individual soul will stay for a longer time or lesser uh, time or whatever. And then uh, once the karma is completed, then take birth. So that is called Agamam, returning, coming back. Because this soul is not liberated. It is only enjoying the karma in different worlds. Therefore it is coming back, returning. Or it want, the individual soul wants to come back. If it is coming from Pidra Loga and Deva Loga, so we uh, took it uh, for the sake of understanding together. So from Deva Loga, suppose it is coming from Deva Loga, abode of gods, so it will come to Parjanya first. Parjanya, rain cloud. Uh, Parjanya is a, uh, rain cloud is called Parjanya. Now the water will come down. And then through Parjanya, rain cloud, then uh, through rain it will fall on Prithvi. Uh, Prithvi, it will come to Prithvi. Then uh, there, uh, after falling to Prithvi, grow us all creepers and then you know, we will have this uh, rice, paddies and all those. And then it is eaten by people. Or the people when, when uh, Purusha, the man eats, so it will enter into the body of man and woman 
than the take birth. So this is in short we have given, we can give a long list. So this is how it transmigrate and it be, in between there is no bhoga. Only when you enter to Pidraloka, there will be some experiences. Similarly in Devaloka, in the abode of gods. So in two places you have experience because you are going for the experience. Then after that you will return back to uh, the birth. Again you will have the same birth. <coughs> So in uh, 20th Kariga we have seen the word, you might remember that, the lingam, che achetanam chetana vadiva lingam, there it was mentioned. Now we are discussing on that more. So there the originally uh, whatever uh, the nature of linka, we have the 13 uh, indriyas, they are all achetanas. Why? Because the, it is a manifestation of Prakriti. So therefore they are Achetanas. But in union with or after the reflection it becomes Chetana Vat. So we have to connect that with here. So this is a, the connection of Linga Sarira. Therefore Linga Sarira is here it is individual soul. Jivatma. So now it will take birth like that. So this Linga Sarira will remain uh, in Sushupti, Samadhi and even in liberated state, Jivan Mukti. That is what they say. Because we cannot discard Linga Sarira before the Pralaya. Sometimes uh, this point what we are, he, this Sankhya is talking seems to be very logical if we see uh, the process of that. Because the Linga Sarira is eternal till the last pralaya, maha pralaya. But before that, it takes many birth and in that, the linga sarira will experience the liberation also. If it gets the chance, then it enjoys the, uh, you know, experience the liberation. But it remains as linga sarira until the maha pralaya comes the last uh, dissolution comes. Uh, so that is that is the idea. Uh, then after Mahapralaya, the beings who are not liberated, hmm. the next cycle, they will get new liberation? Yeah, yeah. No new Linga Sarira, no. The, uh, the karmas will remain for them. Even yeah. So they, they, will, they will get uh, again and they will be continued. As uh, the, where the Mahapralaya happens, only the liberated souls liberated. They will not have a, a new birth. But the other souls will have new birth. New sharira, ah, new sharira will come. New Sharira will be formed according to their karmas. And then they will get Sushma Sharira or Stula Sharira according to their karmas. They will, get, they will come into this process in samsara. So it's merging is only, you know, it is merging is only a development or what is the manifestation. The part of uh, gradual uh, change is going to change. The Mahapralaya is also a gradual change according to Sankhya. It is not an end to anything. It is not an end to anything means uh, if after Mahapralaya you cannot imagine all the karma is gone. Now it will not come back. No. Sankhya's concept as well as Vedanta's concept, both are same. If we win Mahapralaya, the karmas will not die. It will come again in different forms. Again it will take birth. Because each uh, Yuga, we have a Pralaya. And then the Kalpa Pralaya, then Mahapralaya comes. So Kalpa Pralaya is also is a big Pralaya. pralaya. And after that the Mahapralaya comes. So therefore, uh, this Linga Sarira remains everywhere. So you can have the liberation, that is what they say. Now according to Vedanta, only Brahman remains, nothing else. Therefore, in that state, 
liberation cannot be experienced by an individual soul. The individual soul is no more. This is the difference between Sankhya and this uh, Vedanta. Because they are keeping the individual for the experience. Is there. We, uh, they have to say that Linka Sharira is there. Although this uh, consciousness is all pervading. And Pragati is also all pervading. But this special uh, um, case of, in the case of uh, Linka Sharira, this Linka Sharira remains and keeps the individuality for the particular uh, individual who is liberated or who uh, the other uh, who are enjoying. So for both the uh, Linka Sharira's are there. Therefore, they get all these forms. And uh, uh, it cannot be discarded. This is the, uh, we can say this is a problem if according to Vedanta we see this is a problem because after liberation also the Linga Sharira remains. And uh, from their point, if you logically you think or you take the manifestation theory, if liberation is not experienced, then what is the use of liberation? And another interesting point, they say liberation is experienced, but there is no enjoyment as such, no happiness, no bliss or nothing is enjoyed, because enjoyment is already gone. The liberated soul has no enjoyment, but it is liberate, liberated. And Vedanta says, uh, when you are liberated, you will have the great bliss as the uh, consciousness itself. So here in this point they have so much uh, of uh, no difference. So they, they don't accept. Why? Because if you say uh, again there is enjoyment, it means the prakriti is working and then what is the liberation? So then you cannot say liberation. Therefore they don't say enjoyment is there, but whatever in the form of uh, consciousness uh, you uh, experience it separately and that's that remains as Linka Sharira. So this we will have another discussion on this. And here the another uh, one more point is uh, mentioned. The manifestation in sequence of reflected consciousness. Now we have this Linka Sharira considered to be reflected consciousness. Therefore we call it as individual sort. Jivatma. Okay. So for Jivatma it is reflected consciousness. So, deflected consciousness has two different forms, individual and cosmic. So, the individual form, the first reflection is that the union, the conjunction of consciousness chit and the object chitta. In individual, uh, 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 individual form, the first reflection, what is the first reflection? Uh, there is a uh, reflection in consciousness and object, object as chitta. So chitta and chitta is connected here. Chitta means here the uh, mahatattva, mahatattva in the form of intellect. It is individual. Okay, so this, uh, uh, this uh, conjunction, this union is the last traceable. So this linka is called the last traceable. So this we have to connect. In this uh, 20th Kariga, we discussed about this reflection. It, there it was not mentioned, uh, is it uh, individual reflection or the cosmic? It was not mentioned. But the implied meaning was that when it is uh, connected to buddhi, intellect, we can call it as uh, individual reflection and that is why it is called a lingam and lingam is last traceable. So through the meditation you will enter into linka sharira. So linka sharira is identified, uh, experienced or traced by meditation process. It is not normally known. So and the prakriti is called alinka. The prakriti cannot be experienced in any form. So the reflection, now the last, this uh, first reflection is again reflected or re-reflected. 
into ahankara. So the reflections, reflection. What is called in English? If you have the second reflection, there is one word for that. So the reflection has again the reflection. Sorry, there is some word. I don't, I don't remember it. There is some technical word. The first reflection and second reflection and third reflection because one one is reflected to another uh, mirror. Then the uh, this uh, reflection is reflected to another mirror, something like that. So this reflection comes. Now, this reflection is very important for us because this reflection makes life, the creation of life. The reflection between consciousness and object. Object as chitta. The chitta and chitta is reflected. So reflected in ahangara. So then ahangara is activated. Okay. So the eyeness is activated. So then comes to mind. So this reflection continues. It means the ahangara is reflected and the uh, uh, into mind, and mind is reflected through sense organs. So without mind, sense organ can, organs cannot sense the object. The sensation will be not there. The sensation in the object, uh, sorry, in the sense organs are connected to mind, connected to brain. So therefore, it is also a reflection of consciousness. Through this uh, chetana, three, uh, through the reflection, the all body is reflected with consciousness. The physical body become conscious. Okay, this is individual manifestation of the first reflection. Now the cosmic manifestation has only two forms. Cosmic intelligence with the energies, the last traceable, mahat, the cosmic Intelligence is Mahat. So it has all the energies. Energies means five, three gunas. It is reflected into cosmic Ines Ahankara. Uh, after that also we can say, but only uh, uh, the, in cosmic level, cosmic Ahankara and cosmic intellect. And from there the Indriyas comes. Because after that uh, Ahankara is reflected into mind. And then Egadashi Indriyas, so it become uh, individual. You have to uh, talk, uh, talk about that. Therefore, in this point, Sankhya believe all the Indriyas as their nature, they are all cosmic in the level. They are, uh, in, 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 uh, it means they are all all pervading. They are all each Indriya, each uh, object is all pervading. So that is what they say. Uh, so this is cosmic and this is individual. This is two uh, manifestations. So we should not confuse when we talk about individual. So individual has so many differences with karma and all those. And cosmic has no karma manifestation. The cosmic uh, level, karma is there. All karma is stored in cosmic level only. All the reflection goes to. But there is no manifestation of karma. The manifestation of karma through individual soul only. So this is the uh, chart connected to Karika number 40. So we will see the 41 Karika next. Om Purnamataha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudasya Dev Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishya Dev Om Shanti Shanti